Episode 4 of Hell of a Boss just dropped, so we're gonna break down everything you might have missed. There will be more videos this week breaking down what we learned, so don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss them. Now, this month's episode focuses primarily on Cherub, a group of, as you guessed it, Cherubs, who operate as a sort of counterpoint to Imp, where they go down to Earth in order to bless the living and protect them from harm on behalf of other dead people. What's interesting about this commercial is that it's being viewed by the Imp gang in Hell. For those who don't know, Hell's a lot closer to Heaven in the Hasman verse than you might think. In fact, from the Pride Ring, you can see this glowing orb in the sky, which is actually the land of Heaven itself, where the exterminators come down from each year. This could mean that whatever signals they are sending are getting mixed with hell signals. However, it's also possible that they actually paid to have this ad play in hell somehow. This could mean that, despite being sinners, some people in hell have enough good in them to want to see their loved ones thrive while on earth, enough to ask angels for their help. There's a lot more we want to break down. But before we jump into that, Live Action Deep Cut is here to thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives, lifelong learners, and everyone from dabblers to masters who are just looking for a little more knowledge. They have classes in just about everything, from photography, to video, to even self-improvement. But one class you may all want to check out is the Introduction to Cinema 4D by Don Mupasi. If you're watching Cartoon Universe, you probably love cartoons, and this class alone teaches you everything you need to make your own 3D animations, with an endless amount of other classes for just about any 3D animation software you can imagine, so you're never limited. You never know, one day soon we may be reviewing your cartoon here on the channel. Skillshare has definitely been instrumental in me learning 3D animation as well, but the best part is that Skillshare's membership, which comes to just about $10 a month with an annual subscription, includes no ads so you're able to dedicate yourself to learning without interruption. I'll put a link in the description and in a pinned comment down below. The first 1,000 people who click on it will get a free trial, so make sure you jump on that as fast as you can, but don't forget to come back and watch the rest of this video. Now this commercial for Cherub gives us our first look at Heaven, and there's a few fun details you may have missed. At first glance, it looks like any generic heavenscape, a city that exists in the clouds. One small detail that you might have missed, though, is that there is a town specifically called Cherub Town. If cherubs are a sort of counterpoint to imps, an inversion of sorts, then cherubs are likely natural-born citizens of heaven. Heaven may even have multiple rings to itself just like hell, where earthborn angels would not be able to travel to, with cherub existing as a new city in that ring for the earthborn angels just like imp city. Most of the buildings just look cartoony and wholesome and high-end, but some are rather extravagant and raise the question of if they are actually buildings. I've seen some people already speculating that this particular background doesn't show a building, but actually the angel Ophanim, which is described as having rings and spokes. While artist renditions are similar, they are not quite the same as it does not have any eyes, unless these little dots are eyes. So the word is still out. But if cherubs exist, and presumably other angelic species, then it wouldn't surprise me to discuss Discover that this is just this show's reimagining of Ophanim, the same way Stolas is based on the real owl demon prince from the Lesser Key of Solomon, but still has his own unique design. It would explain why we see the structure right as the gates open, as Ophanim is supposed to be the angel closest to God, perhaps someone guarding the gates. From Cherub Town, we can see another city in the distance, protected by gates, and I like to imagine that this is where God might be living. While there seems to be no real word on if God exists in the has verse, we do know that the angels take the idea seriously enough that expressions like, oh my god, are still considered immoral to them, taking the Lord's name in vain. Though whether or not they affect their status in heaven is something we have yet to see. Also in Cherub Town, we see strange eye imagery. In Hell, the eye imagery is a constant theme, one that Vivzy Pops explains is the result of exterminators killing demons and their evil essence being absorbed by everything around them, giving them eyes, sometimes even mouths, and making them seem alive even though they don't have consciousness or soul the way that the other demons all do. This eye is above a gate, and its entire structure is similar to the structure theorized to be Ophanim that we saw at the gates of heaven, which may be another hint that this theory is true. God is referenced again on a motivational poster in the the Cherub commercial, however, this does not seem to be an indication that he exists or not, though if this really is a quote from him within the world, it's a bit mean. During the scene, the ground starts shaking, and while we know it to be from the demon destroying the building in order to use their business services, some of the characters freak out that it might be a hell shake. Moxie is insistent that they aren't real, which makes his lack of fear even more concerning, frankly. 
Vivzipop has said that Hell has a series of issues that happen here and there that all of the denizens of Hell have to deal with together, such as allergies that mess up everyone. Presumably, this is one of those issues when Hell itself shakes like an earthquake, just causing tons of damage and ruining what everyone has built. The fact that Moxie is saying that they don't exist means that they are either a superstition within Hell, or perhaps it's not all of Hell or all seven rings that shake at the same time. Perhaps Moxie never experienced it in the rings that he's lived in, but other seem to be aware and very afraid of them. I expect this to be brought back in a future episode as well. The Quake is of course brought on by the Demon of the Week looking to use their service, who makes the second reference in two episodes to Luna looking like a furry, explicitly calling her one. During this weird montage, Loopty smacks the other demon on the butt, which is weird, but I'd ship it. A spin-off of these two being crazy inventors, making money, and being all steampunk, and then falling in love over the course of the show would be awesome. Blitz explains to Loopty that if he does kill his friend, then he and Loopty will be stuck together forever, a warning that emphasizes a theory I had in a previous video, click here to see it, where I theorize that all the humans that Imp kills may come back and try to kill them in hell at some point in the series. On Earth, the demons now have human disguises, though they are literal costumes instead of magic disguises that Luna had, further supporting my theory that imps cannot use magical human disguises. The target for this week is so old and hopeless that he actually wants to end his own life, and the imp gang would have an easy time of it if not, of course, for the cherubs. A battle ensues for this man's soul, essentially, and the angel's actions accidentally lead to his and others' deaths, and as a result, they are banned from returning to heaven. This would seem to indicate that intent isn't necessarily what matters with sin, that accidentally killing someone, even when trying to do a good thing, can even get a natural-born citizen kicked out of heaven, which makes sense considering that in Christian lore, demons are generally thought of as fallen angels. Their little spokesperson even claims that there is nothing they can do to change this, which speaks to the strict standards that set up the plot in Hasbin Hotel, and how hard it is to find redemption. We don't know what happens to these cherubs, but I doubt it's the last we'll see of them. For now, I imagine them continuing to protect people of Earth, but as time progresses, they may end up going to hell of their own volition. Vivzy Pop claims that if demons went to heaven, they would receive a new angelic form, and the inverse is likely true. Who knows, some of these cherubs might turn to imps, giving us answers to where imps actually come from originally. In the end, both of these rich steampunk men end up in hell, and despite the motivation for Loopty to get his friend there, they seem to be happy to spend their afterlife together. Oh, and that demon from the commercial earlier appears to give their lives some meaning in hell, hopefully to appear in future episodes. That's all I was able to find after just two viewings, but what else did I miss? Let me know in a comment down below, and don't forget, I am on Twitter now, so if you follow me there, at TheDeepCut1, you can now point things out to me directly, and maybe we'll make a video on it. See you next time.